Now we're ready to begin setting up a Stripe webhook. So what we've been doing so far, if we look at the Stripe checkout flow again, we send in the price ID to our API. Our API talks with Stripe, gets back a session ID, sends that back to the client, the Angular application. We redirect the user to the checkout page. And then if the user is successful at purchasing a membership, then we give them the, or we send them back to the success page. But how do we get notified? Like for example, if a customer is created or a subscription is created, well, that is what Stripe webhooks are for. So Stripe webhooks are good for receiving event notifications from Stripe. There's a few steps to this, and there's gonna be a couple of videos on this topic alone. And in this video, we're gonna be mainly focusing on setting up the Stripe CLI so we could test our own APIs or our own webhooks with Stripe. Let's first check out the Stripe dashboard. Here in the Stripe dashboard, to find the webhooks section, you can go under developers and click on webhooks. And here is different ways we could test our webhooks. For example, if you have a live webhook, you have it on the web, you can add it right here. And you can add in your, your API here, and then you can select the different event you want to listen for. But we're testing on our local machine and our API is localhost 5001, and we can't enter that here. So we need to set up the Stripe CLI to test our local API. So to do that, we want to install the CLI. And if you click on that button, and then down here, you can install different packages depending on what operating system you're using. So I'm currently using Windows. So I went and I installed Scoop, and then I later on installed the Stripe. So that's what you wanna set up on your local machine. You could also set up Linux and also Mac. Now, once you get this installed and set up, you should be able to go to, in this case, my Windows PowerShell, and I'll select this. And when you enter in Stripe, you should get back a bunch of options. And I did. So you wanna make sure you're at this point before you go on. Now, once you get to this point, we're ready to set up our webhook key. So this webhook key is gonna protect our webhook APIs so only Stripe can use this API. So let's set that up. So the first thing you wanna do is see if you can log in. So I'm gonna enter in login. It might ask you to uh, authenticate this. You might have that pop up in a new window. I think I'm already authenticated, so it's, it's not asking me. And then you wanna run Stripe Listen. And it actually opened up in the other window here, so I'm gonna pull this over. And it's asking me to authenticate this. So I'll say yes, allow access. So I just paired up with Stripe. Now run Stripe Listen again. We should get back a key. And yes, we did. So this key we want to add to our project, and it's only good for a limited time, 90 days. So I'll copy this key. Back in our API, our back end, we'll add in our webhook secret key, and we'll add that to the app setting file. And we'll add that within the Stripe setting. So I'll add that towards the end here. And then we'll also set up our Stripe setting file, and that's inside the models folder. And I'll add another property here so we can get access to it. And now we'll be pulling this into our controller, and we already pulling in this file inside of our controller. If we open up our payments controller, and we set this up in a prior video where we're bringing in uh, this right here, so the Stripe settings. And we'll need the Stripe settings in the next video when we set up our API. So there's one more thing I wanna show you. Let's jump into the Stripe dashboard. When we were pairing up within the command line, you should now see, if you go back to your dashboard, you should see this. So now we are paired up with Stripe. So now in the next video, let's actually create our webhook API, and that's what we'll do in video nine.